So it has been around 30 miles. So I'll do a nice little pull for you guys. Just balls to the wall so we can see. So here we go. What is up Matoir fam, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Antonio Matoir and I own a 2017 BMW 340i. So I'm very excited for today's video, um, it's something that I've been wanting to do to my car for a long time now. And that is the XHP transmission tune. If you guys watched my most recent video, you'll know that I got new tires that are super sticky. So I am ready to get some draggy times, but I felt that the draggy times would not be accurate or good enough in my opinion if I did not have that transmission tune so pretty much just a little rundown for you guys the xhp transmission flash is pretty much just a transmission tune that makes your shifts a whole lot faster so it's just like tuning your engine with boot mode mhd jb4 etc except you're tuning your transmission instead of your engine when tuning your engine and increasing your horsepower and torque your stock transmission cannot really keep up with the amount of torque that your engine is now producing and so there's something called torque limiters without going too much into that just know that your transmission can undergo a lot more it's just tuned for the power output that your car comes with from factory this video is going to be kind of lengthy because i wanted to be very thorough with you guys and give you guys as much information as possible so with that being said there will be some timestamps down below so you guys can skip to whichever part of the video that you would like to but in this video i would like to include how fast the car is shifting without the transmission flash and then flash it and show you guys how fast it's shifting afterwards as well as get some draggy times without the flash and then with the flash again in the beginning of the video i also want to show you guys how to flash it just in case you guys are brand new to the xxp transmission flash and then at the end just give you my opinion on if this transmission flash is worth it or not so that being said, let's dive right into the video. So pretty much while we're already in the garage, I just wanted to go over how to flash it to your vehicle. Uh, I won't actually flash it to mine just because I still have to go out and get some draggy times without the flash. But for the purposes of this video, let me show you guys how to flash it. So for starters, you're obviously going to want to get an XHP license. On the website, you can buy the license, you can buy the license and a map, or you can buy the combo deal, which is what I purchased, and you can get a license and all three maps. You can get a stage one flash, stage two, and stage three. So if your car is a daily driver and you don't want anything too crazy or aggressive, then stage one's probably for you. Stage two is a very popular flash for people that get the XHP. And stage three is pretty much for like tracking your car or if you just want a really aggressive tune, if you like racing your car, or if you just like driving really fast. So stage three is what I'll be flashing on my car today. So pretty much you're gonna wanna download the XHP flash tool app on your phone. Once you download it, go ahead and open up the app. So the very first thing is going to ask you to do is connect your vehicle to the app so what you're going to want to do is use an ethernet cable or you can use a wi-fi device if that's what you guys have once it reads your vin and it connects your car you're going to want to download the backup it's going to tell you that you have to download the backup before you can flash anything pretty much what that means is that if you ever want to flash your car back to the stock transmission then you can do that by backing it up so that's what you're going to want to do at the very top it should say flash license like that with two check marks and then the map eight speed or whatever you have. So once you have the check marks at the very top, you can go ahead and scroll down to this little lightning icon. So click on that. And as mentioned previously, you'll see all of the stages. You'll see sedan stage one, two, and three. So if you click on each one of them, it'll show you exactly what's within that flash. So stage one, for example, added gear display in drive mode, remove torque limiters, stage two, Obviously the list gets a little bit longer and then if you click on stage three, this is like I said the most aggressive flash that you can do so um, obviously you get a little more than stage one and two. So once you figure out which one you want to go with, you're going to click the lightning bolt next to that one. So from in my case, I would click the lightning bolt next to stage three and so you want to select the latest version. So they have previous versions, but some of them might be bugged and you always want to make sure that you're always downloading the latest version. So that way that you have a clean, smooth flash and there's no issues with it. So if I was actually flashing my car right now, I would go ahead and click the V1.7 for the latest version and then begin the flashing process. I still have to show you guys how the car shifts uh, without the transmission flash. We're gonna go ahead and head out on a POV drive so I can show you guys and then we'll come back to the garage to actually flash it. 
All right, guys, so I'm gonna also have my GoPro um, recording my dash, so that way you guys can see exactly what's going on over here. I actually might use my phone. All right, that's a lot better. So we'll use the phone. So pretty much, starting out, nothing crazy in comfort mode. I just wanted to show you guys how it's shifting. Um, so as you can see, the shifts are actually slow enough to actually slow down the car just for a split second before it engages the next gear. So you kind of get that little, even in comfort, you kind of get that head bob just because the vehicle is slowing down for a split second before actually speeding back up. Because I understand in comfort mode, you know, it shouldn't shift super fast, but it's still kind of annoying just driving around town and you can just kind of feel it. It's kind of lags. So now I want to record uh, in manual mode. So let me go ahead and switch to that. As you can see, kind of steady going around 40 miles per hour and then shift up. And see, I don't know if you heard the click of my paddle, but it took about a second to respond. I clicked the paddle and then it finally wanted to shift. So let me do it again and click. And it just now, after a whole second lag, shifted. So that was comfort mode. Let's try it in Sport Plus now, just so you guys can kind of get a feel. So as you guys can see, and next gear, go a little bit faster so we can shift again. In Sport Plus, it is a little better with the shifting. It is a little faster, which is to be expected, but still not as smooth and buttery as I would like it. Let's go ahead and try manual mode in Sport, so that way we can kind of get a feel for it. All right, so manual mode in Sport. Accelerate and click. And one more time, click. So as you can see in Sport Plus, it is a lot more responsive than Comfort, but it's still not instantaneous. And that's what I've heard with this tune that once you flash it, as soon as you click that gear, it's going to that gear. So I'm kind of excited to see um, if, you know, the hype and see if what I've heard about it is really true because there is definitely is room for improvement when it comes to the shifting uh, on the stock transmission. All right, so I did want to go ahead and get some draggy times also um, on the stock transmission without the flash, just so that way we can get a good representation of how much time or if any time at all that we've shaved off once we do the transmission flash. So I got my draggy set up. Um, I'll probably do like a launch control. So let's go ahead and do that, see what we can get. Looks like zero to 60 was a 4.3, which is absolutely terrible. So um, we'll try that again. We'll run that back. Um, Cause I did get some wheel spin and it, I didn't launch properly. So let me go ahead and spin around and do it again. So I have a confession guys, that launch that I just did was in comfort mode. <laughs> I had a lot going on, all right? I got a lot of recording going on right now. I wasn't paying attention, but let's do it again in Sport Plus mode and get a good launch. All right, here we go. See, why is it? I might have to shift manually because this car is like not shifting what it should be. Like it's, it's coasting like redlining before it shifts. That was a lot better. That one was a lot better manually shifting. So 3.9 was a zero to 60. Uh, we still were spinning in the beginning, but I mean, hey, like I said, dusty road, not much I can do about that. So I actually have everything with me in order to flash my car. So to be honest, I'll just flash it right here and uh, hope my battery doesn't die. And I hope it doesn't take too long because it's hot as hell out here. So I forgot to mention it earlier, but it can, it says it can take up to like 20 minutes um, from what I've heard from people. Even flashing for the first time, it's like one, two minutes. So hopefully I'm on that spectrum of it <laughs> with the one to two minutes because I'm not trying to be out here in the sun with no AC for uh, 20 minutes. It's already getting hot. Oh, that's not bad at all. So it literally only took like a minute and 30 seconds. So like when it's going, it kind of tells you the estimated time of the flash to be complete. 
And yeah, it was like a minute and 38. So now it's clearing fault codes and success. Now when you flash it, they do say that you have to drive around for at least like 50 miles uh, just to make sure that your transmission kind of gets used to the new flash. So you don't want to do any hard aggressive pulls right off the bat because you don't want to like shock your transmission and mess something up. So we'll go ahead and drive around for usually around the, like the 30 mile mark. You're pretty safe to just go ahead and, um, you know, go balls to the wall. But while we're waiting for that 30 miles, I'll go ahead and give you guys my uh, first impressions and let's see how fast it shifts now compared to when we didn't have the tune at all. Oh my goodness. Right off the bat, it is definitely a night and day difference. Like it's not even, oh, it's, you know, it's subtle. No, it's definitely, you definitely feel the shifts a lot faster. So let me go ahead and record on my phone so you guys can see. But in comfort mode, Look how fast it shifts. This is just automatic. Look at that. Almost instantaneous. That is crazy. So I don't know if you guys remember in the beginning, I was mentioning like how in comfort mode, when you're kind of just cruising along, you'll kind of get that jerk just because it does take a while to actually shift. Um, and now there is no jerk. Like I'm in comfort mode right now and the shifts so fast that it's just seamless and like buttery smooth that there is no jerk which is pretty impressive i also love how it shows you what gear you're in after you flash it as you can see right there has the d5 so but you know you're in fifth but just look at the okay accelerate it just shifted probably missed it because it was so fast just shifted it again you probably missed it because it was so fast but no like in all seriousness though the shifts are super super fast i'm gonna try it in manual mode um, and see how fast the it shifts. I'm really impressed for sure. So here's manual mode and comfort. So shift. Yeah. Shift. Shift. So there's no difference in the delay from when you hit the button to when it actually shifts, but there is a huge difference in the shift time if that makes sense. So now that we have it in comfort mode, let's try it out in Sport Plus. Cause I know in stage three, um, comfort mode they say is kind of like, you know, still pretty comfortable, but in Sport Plus mode is when it gets kind of like rowdy, you could say. So let's go ahead and see. So we're in fifth gear, I'll accelerate a little bit. Oh, and it shifted just like that. I will say you can feel it a lot more um, in Sport Plus. It does feel more raw and you can feel the car actually wanting to go to the next gear and just wanting to go so um yeah but once again very very fast shifts so the last test that we'll do before we go back and do some zero to 60 times sport plus in manual mode go ahead and accelerate a little bit and shift and shift that is so crazy that is insane how fast it shifts. Like I know I keep saying that, but I just cannot get over how fast it's shifting. So it has been around 30 miles. So I'll do a nice little pull for you guys. Just balls to the wall so we can see. So here we go. Oh my God. That is insane. This thing is moving. Like it blows my mind how much of a difference that makes when, you know, going full throttle. Wow. All right, so like I said, now that we've driven the 30 miles, 30 or 40 or so miles, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do another draggy pull, same exact spot that we did the first one, and we are gonna be uh, in manual mode and shift uh, manually, just so that way everything is consistent with the first run and we can get accurate times. so trash for this though like this road is dusty as hell i'm gonna have to find a better a better area to do this zero to 60 just because this ain't cutting it all right kind of a different area but we'll try it one more time let's get it ah terrible 4.2 this better be the one because it's the last one i'm doing here we go. Still 4.2, that is terrible. 
terrible, man. So yeah, a little disappointing that I couldn't get the zero to 60, you know, after the transmission flash, but hey, it is what it is. I'll do a separate video, you know, where I actually go to a spot that's already prepped. You know, I'll do a burnout so I can get a good, accurate time but for the purposes of this video i just kind of wanted to focus on the transmission flash so thoughts on the transmission flash like i said multiple times night and day difference um it shifts a whole lot faster in comfort and sport in sport it does shift a little more aggressive than without the flash but for good reason if you're like me and just like driving your car fast or you actually track your car then the stage three flash is definitely for you if you're more of a person that just daily drives your car but at the same time you know when you put it in sport you want those faster shifts but not as aggressive stage two is probably for you stage one honestly if it came down to just buying one map i wouldn't even waste your money on stage one at that point i would probably just do a stage two or stage three but if you get the combo deal and you get all three of them obviously you can flash either one of them as many times as you like so that'd be up to you but overall yes i do definitely recommend this transmission flash um since i've been driving like i'm still mind blown of how fast it shifts and especially when you're shifting manually and even the downshifts are like super aggressive if you are trying to increase your zero to 60 time your quarter mile time any of that this is definitely a must so i'm definitely excited to continue making hellcat hunting videos because now when i do run somebody i'm going to be shifting a whole lot faster which is crucial when you're running somebody i definitely do recommend buying the transmission tune because it's definitely a night and day difference especially if your engine is already tuned the transmission tune is definitely a must and i don't know why i waited so long to get mine but just like that that wraps up today's video if you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel please consider subscribing i do diys pov drives reviews you name it and if you like this video or help you out in any way please give it a thumbs up it helps me out tremendously and as always matoire fam remember your goals and don't stop till you reach them peace excited just to see me wish i felt the same way they don't want your